You look tall. Come on. All right, guys. I'd like to welcome you to our online service today. Thank you, guys, for this wonderful Sunday morning. It's Amen. pretty outside. The sun is out, shining, as Bob Marley would say. Um, a lot of snow on the ground. Some roads are still iffy. Uh, be careful as you travel, if you are traveling. Uh, but, guys, we uh, opted to have our service online today to make sure everybody stays safe. But, guys, it's not an opportunity to veer away from the Word. Uh, so we definitely like to join you online. You can watch us on YouTube. Replay us later on. Facebook. Can, Facebook. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page. Guys, give us a like. Let us know you're there. Uh, if you need prayer, put in the comments, hey, guys, I need prayer for this. We want to pray for you, definitely, because uh, it is a, 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 this is a trying times. It really is. But, guys, uh, just a couple of updates before we get started. Um, this upcoming week here at Stony Run, we will not be having any Monday night prayer, Wednesday night service, due to our carpets being clean. Uh, can't have anybody on the carpet, but we will meet again next Sunday. And no bingo tomorrow, oh. too, because bingo is scheduled for the 24th, mm -hmm. so make Do sure Do not want to miss that. Make sure we... Um, bingo that was scheduled tomorrow also is being rescheduled. Um, so, guys, please pay attention to bingo, Monday night prayer, and our Wednesday night uh, midweek Bible study. Um, but, guys, uh, watch us online. We will definitely be there. Be in prayer. Make sure you're reading the Word. Stay close in your walk with God. Um, and, and I don't think I'm missing anything else. Uh, set come things coming up. Uh, also, February, oh man, February the 12th, it's Saturday, it's our parents' night out. Um, guys, let's give our parents an opportunity to go celebrate um, Valentine's Day. Uh, we'll be here, we'll give you free child care that Saturday evening. Amen. I think it's 6 or 6.30 to 9, 9.30, something like that. Um, got a great night planned out for our children. Uh, so guys, feel free to drop your kids off at 6, 6.30 on February the 12th, Saturday here at the church. Uh, we're going to get a good night planned for them. But um, other than that, I, I can't think of anything else but jump into the Word. It's important that we stay in God's Word, guys. It, man, during this time, our walk is the only thing keeping us from falling away uh, into this world uh, of sin. Uh, Satan is trying with every tactic that he can to pull us away. And, this, and, and, this, and you can see it more and more in our culture, in the United States of America. Guys, we need the Word. We need God's Word. And we need the church to start standing up on the foundation of our religion, and that's Jesus Christ. Amen. So, guys, we want to pray for today. Yes. Lift up Pastor Rick as yes. he's ready to bring the word. Be with those uh, who may be sick. Um, COVID that's is right. still rampant. Man, it's it still is. crazy. It is. Um, and, guys, I, I, it's sad when we get sick. We want to lift up those who are battling that as well. Cancers, the other things that are not going away in this world of sin. Man. Terrible. It's so easy to get distracted, isn't it, Brother Joey? It, it is. Amen. I Amen. mean, you know, everything that goes on, you get you get your eyes off the main thing. Yes, sir. And, and on to the distraction. And then, you know. Yes, sir. And here at Stony Run, guys, we're in this walk together. Man, we, we want to walk with you. It, just because you see us on stage, see us here, doesn't mean <laughs> we're not, not going through the same thing. That's right. And we're here as a church to edify, lift each yes. other up. And then Monday night prayers are always good for that. Yes. Our Wednesday night Bible study, our small groups, man, they're start ramping back up this, uh, this That's month. That's right. That's um, right. So, guys, if you're looking to connect, hey, I'm finding a way to connect at Stony Run, dude, come get in touch with a small group. Let us know, and we can plug you in one. Uh, but let's go to prayer. Let's, yes. let's go to God yeah. <laughs> with, with everything that's in us and laid at his feet today. Amen. And go sincerely Amen. with our hearts and, and be ready for this word today. Dear Lord Jesus, Amen. thank you, God, for the yes. opportunity that we get to come today, Lord God. Wherever we're at, Lord God, we may not be meeting together, Lord Jesus, but our That's hearts, right. our minds, our bodies, and souls are, are together and one in Christ. And Lord Jesus, no matter where our location is at, Lord God, we can, we can still be touched by you. Yes. Lord God, we're praying for today's, today's word, Lord God, through Pastor Rick, the word that you've given him, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord God, that, we ed that edifies the body, it lifts us up, Lord Jesus, that we hear the word that's given by God. Lord Jesus, we... We, 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 we connect with it, Lord God. Yes. We look to ways to apply it to our lives and walk it out, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I pray against the apathetic state that's in the church now, Lord God. We speak against it, Lord Jesus. Yes. We look for a church to rise up. Lord Amen. God, we ask for a revival, but Lord God, we need an awakening, that's Lord Jesus, right. once again in the church. We need to see, Lord God, what you've called us to be and that's start right. walking us out, that's Lord right. God. Lord Jesus, we, in 1 Peter, Lord God, in 1 Peter 22, Lord God, you tell us, Lord Jesus, Lord God, to throw away, put rid of ourselves 
sins, Lord God. Yes. In, in, in chapter 2, in verse 1 through 3, Lord God, you tell us desire for your word, Lord God, as the baby does for milk. Lord yes. God, we need to hunger and thirst for you, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we want to see th- uh, our community turn around, Lord God. We need to turn to you. We yes. need to desire your word, Lord yes. God. In Jesus' yes. name, I pray that in our, in our society. I pray that in our culture. I pray that in our country, Lord God, yes. that we turn back to you, Lord Jesus. We pray for those who are battling sicknesses right now, That's Lord right. God. This COVID, That's Lord right. God. It, Lord Jesus, you're still ahead of it, Lord God, of That's it all. Right. And Lord God, we look to you for healing. We look to yes. you for guidance, Lord yes. Jesus. We look for you, Lord God, above anything else, Lord Jesus. In your name, we pray to that today. We pray for those who are battling cancers, Lord Jesus, other sicknesses, Lord God. Now, the church is here, Lord God. We want to pray for healing, Lord yes. God. You're still yes. performing miracles in That's Jesus' right. name, That's and we're right. trusting in that, Lord God. That's right. Lord God, we want to see more done here, Lord God, in this community, in this state, and in yes. this country, Lord God. Yes. Be with us, Lord Jesus. Lord God, I pray in your name, Lord, today, Lord God, be with your church here. And as we hear the word, let us praise your name and give all the glory to Jesus' name. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Thank you, guys. Get amen. ready for Pastor Rick with an right. awesome word. All right. Amen. All right. All right. All right. Joey's got me cranked up now. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go now. All right. All right. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, it's a beautiful day out. We, uh, we came this morning to, uh, to share a word with you. I, uh, as, long as, I've got, as long as I've got power... I got somebody to mash the button, amen. But I'm glad Carrington and Eric's here this morning to help me out um, and some of the others that are with us today. Um, I'm so thankful for that. I want to give a shout out to Sister Pat. I know she's hanging up in Raleigh right now, um, watching online, I hope, and I hope she's safe and well. Uh, so we are, we're just looking for a, for a good day today. I want to, um, to give you a title today. I like to start with a title because it gives you an expectation, right? You, you, you need to expect something out of, out of whatever is going on today. And so I, I decided I wanted to do something with a snow theme today. Because since we have snow, I mean, I don't have anybody here, but I do have snow outside. So, so I'm, I, we're doing a snow theme. So, so today's title is A Lion in the Midst of a Pit on a Snowy Day. All right. This sounds like a, this almost sounds like a C.S. Lewis book or something, right? A lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. I mean, I just, I just like that. Um, it is from 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 20 through 23. I want to um, go ahead and, and read the word. Let's, let's read the word, and then we'll, we'll go from there. 2 Samuel uh, 23 gives a list of David's mighty men, the men that were, that were mighty and powerful and all those that served. And at the end of his life, he was kind of recounting all of those that were, were considered mighty men. Wouldn't that be cool if we were on the list? Right, that, that, that we were on a list, on God's list, as, as mighty men or mighty woman, women of God, that, that we, we did mighty things for God, that, that we did awesome things. And so, so today, as I, as I look at this, uh, I want to go ahead and, uh, and go in that direction. I'm going to go ahead and uh, read from 2 Samuel chapter 23, verses 20 through 23. It tells us, in, starting in verse 20, Benaiah was the son of Jehoiada, uh, the son of a valiant man from Kabzeel who had done many deeds. He had killed two lion-like heroes of Moab. He also had gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. He killed an Egyptian, a spectacular man. The Egyptian had a spear in his hand, so he went down to him with a staff, wrested the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and killed him with his own spear. These things Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, did and uh, won a name among three mighty men. He was more honored than the 30, but he did not attain to the first three. And David appointed him over his guard. Father God, we just pray over your word today, Father, that, um, that we would be strengthened, that we would be encouraged, God, that you would uh, speak to us through your word today. Father, every time that we, we open your word, why, it's an opportunity for your Holy Spirit to minister to us in our lives. And so, Father, as we come together today and we do share your word one with another, Lord, I pray that we would be edified. I pray that we would be built up. I pray that your Holy Spirit would move mightily and powerfully in your people as we share the word of God. So, Father, I, I just ask God that you would just, just bless all of this, everything that, that, I, that I preach, that we pray, that, that we say today. Lord, that your blessing will be upon all of this. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as I'm looking at this, Benaiah was one of David's mighty men. 
Um, he, was, he was such a mighty guy that, that David put him in charge of his personal guard. So he was like the head of his bodyguard, so to speak, or whatever. He was, he was a, a very, very uh, mighty man um, to, be, to be placed in, in that situation. You're not going to have somebody looking after you unless you can trust them, unless, they're, unless they're, they're, they're good at what they do, unless you feel like that they, they have been tested, they've been tried, and now you're going to place them in a, in a position of authority. I, I want to look at some of the deeds that, that, that Beniah uh, is talked about doing here because I think it's impressive, his, his resume, so to speak. I mean, a lot of the folks in the, in the Word of God, in the Bible, they have a, they have a, a resume. They have, what, what did they do uh, through the power of God? What, what happened? I mean, and, and so I think that Beniah has a pretty impressive resume if we, if we take a look at this. Um, we can look at this in, in a couple different ways. Uh, but I, I want to go ahead and look at the, the first part that it talks about Benaiah. It, it talks about him that um, that he was um, he killed two lion like heroes of Moab. I mean, so so he's he's killed two uh, lion like heroes of Moab. Um, you know, we think about a, a fight when you think about two on one. Two on one is not fair. Okay, I mean, I, I don't care who you are. I know when I was in boot camp down at Paris Island, we had had these things called pugil, pugil sticks. And they had, they had like these, these, these uh, cushions on the end. And you would take these two sticks and you would go in there and you'd fight each other with these things. Well, well one-on-one wasn't too bad. But when it come to two-on-one, man, they would, they would whoop you. I mean, you get, you get whooped every time. But this Beniah, now Beniah fought two lion-like heroes of Moab and, 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 he, and he killed them. Not only did he win, but he, but he killed them. He, he fought a fight he should have lost. Two on one, not good odds. Um, but, but what this says about Beniah was that he was willing to battle even when the odds were stacked against him. I mean, I think that's an important trait. Uh, are, are you a person that is willing to battle even when the odds are stacked against you? Are, if you're working, um, if, you're, if you're following God, if you're, if you're doing these things, are you willing to take a chance? Are you willing to take a chance for God? Are you willing to believe in faith that God can give you a victory in the midst of something, even if it's two on one, even if it's not fair? I mean, how many times do we say, well, this just isn't fair. This just isn't fair. I, I, I don't, I, I, I'm not going to do this. But Beniah was the kind of man that he says, look, I can take out two. You can, you can send two my way. In the power of God, I can take out two. Um, you you got to ask yourself, w- would, you, would you have fought or would you have ran? I mean, which, which would it be? I mean, the, the odds are stacked against you. It's, it, it looks like that you can't win. It looks like all those things. But, but he fought in the power of the Lord, and the Lord gave him the victory. So, so the first thing that we look at in his resume is that he killed two lion-like heroes of Moab. Okay, well, the second thing, and I don't want to jump in in the midst of the pit with the lion yet. I want to save that for last, okay? But, but let's, let's look at the second thing. It talks about him killing an Egyptian man, a spectacular man. A spectac- I like that, spectacular man. Um, you know, the, evidently, the, the, and if we look in um, Chronicles, uh, 1 Chronicles chapter 11, it gives a, a little bit of a different um, take on this. Well, not a different take, but, but a little more detail or whatever. But they talk about this Egyptian man that he was actually about seven and a half feet tall. So, I mean, so this was a big guy, okay? He was five cubits, what they said, five cubits tall. So he's like seven and a half foot tall. So you got an Egyptian who's seven and a half foot tall. He's got a spear in his hand. Well, so Benaiah, what does he jump in with? He jumps in with a staff, okay? Big difference between a spear and a staff. <laughs> a spear has got a head on it, something you can stab people with. A staff is completely different. I mean, so he's fighting a guy that's seven and a half feet tall that has a spear. Benaiah comes with a staff, and not only does he do that, but he takes the spear away from the guy and kills him with his own spear. I mean, man, I'm telling you, this, this is absolutely, this guy is a warrior, man. He, he's like, you can send two people at once against me. I don't care. I'm going to take them out. You can send a seven and a half foot tall giant against me with a spear. I'm coming in with a staff and I'm coming to get him. I mean, it's almost like, you know, people tell you, well, well, don't take a, take a knife to a gunfight. I mean, but, but Benaiah was the kind of guy that would be like, yeah, I'll take a knife to a gunfight. No problem. As long as I got God with me, I'm willing to get in there. I'm willing to go ahead and, and, and take this guy on and do this. So he, he killed him with his own spear i mean these are these are things that that benaiah did that you just look at him and you're like wow that's an awesome guy now I, i've i've heard this preached so many different ways and so many different things and we and we talk about about um all the different ways when we talk about moab and people from moab why a lot of times they they uh attribute that with with like the flesh 
that you're, you're battling against the flesh, okay? You know, and so, so we could, I could preach a whole sermon on, on the fact that Benaiah was able to, to battle against the flesh in one. And, you know, and then if we could, we could look at, at this lion in the pit that we're going to talk about, well, the, the lion, I mean, a lot of times, especially in like Peter talks about the lion, uh, uh, Satan being a lion that, that's, that's, that's prowling around, seeking whom he may devour. So Benaiah is the kind of guy that not only could he, could he battle against Moab or the flesh, but he could also take on the devil and be valiant, but then also the Egyptians. And see, Egypt, every time you talk about Egypt, usually in the, in the Word of God, it, it's, it's like worldliness, like going back to the world. Like the people, when they left Egypt, when the children of Israel left Egypt, why they, they went, but they were always looking back to the good food that was in Egypt, to all the things that they had in Egypt, to all the worldly things. So, so you could preach a whole sermon about how Benaiah was able to, to conquer the flesh, conquer the devil, and conquer worldliness all through all. I mean, you can just go, there's so many ways, and I've heard it preached so many ways. I'm not going that way today, but I mean, that's, that's a way that you could, you could look at this. Um, so we, we look at this, and, and the third thing, is, and this is the part that I liked. Why did I like it? Because I liked it because snow was involved. I mean, it's, it's not a real deep, deep uh, reasoning for, for why I wanted to, uh, to talk about this, but I want to talk about something about the snow. Well, snow is very rare here in North Carolina. We, we get snow once in a while. Um, last week, why well, we had ice and, and we had rain. And, and this week, we've got snow for a change, and, and it's actually nice, pretty snow. I mean, we were all out in the snow yesterday having a great time making snowmen and playing and all these things. And so I, so I wanted to talk about something that, that had snow, and so I'm, I'm looking through the Bible, and I find this verse, and it was just, it, it fascinated me. So I want, I want to look at this. It says that, that Benaiah, it says, he also had gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. I mean, I just, I just like the way that sounds. He, he went in the midst of a pit on a snowy day and killed a lion. I mean, I, I, I look at this. I feel like a lot of times we always want the best situation or the best conditions or the best of whatever. And we always want to wait for, 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 to do something. I mean, how many times have we told someone, now's just not a good time? It's just not a good time to do this right now. When I, when I look at this, you, you, you're in a pit. With a lion on a snowy day. If anyone could say, this is probably not a good idea. First of all, Benaiah jumped in the pit with the lion on a snowy day. So I'm not sure what his uh, motivation was in the midst of that. Because that doesn't sound like a good idea either. <laughs> Why jump in the pit on a snowy day with a lion? But, but you know, so many people, they're like, well, I've, I've got to wait till, till the situation changes. I've got to wait till the season changes. I've got to wait till this. Now is not a good time. But what if God's timing is in it? What if it's God's time? It may not be your time. See, so many times we act about me, 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 I, I, I. It's all about me. What about God? What's God's timing? What was God's plan? What was God's purpose? I, I believe God was in this. You know, I believe that this was part of his resume of following God. I believe that Benaiah was a, was a valiant man. He was a man that was able to do things. He could, he could take on two men at one time and be victorious. He could take on a seven and a half foot Egyptian, take a spear from him and defeat him. I mean, he could do all these things. And not only could he do that, but he could also go into the midst of a pit with a lion on a snowy day and come out victorious. I mean, I, you know, you, you think about that. Wow, God is so awesome. I mean, look at this. You know, we, we, we got three things that we're going to talk about here for a second. The location, a pit, okay? That, that doesn't sound like a, like a good location to have a fight. I'm going in the pit, okay? The second thing is the enemy is a lion, not just any enemy, but a lion. The, the, the king of, 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 of the, uh, the kingdom of, of, of animals and everything else, you got a lion, you got a pit, and now not only that, but then you throw in circumstances. What's well, a snowy day? Well, I don't know how often they had snowy days back then, and I wonder why is this even recorded, but it must have been important for it to be recorded in the Word of God. I mean, this was probably means it was maybe it was like North Carolina where we have a snow day and it's it's a rare thing when we actually have snow. And we're like, man, who would go out and fight a lion in a pit on a snowy day? I mean, imagine going out today out in your backyard and get in a pit with a lion and fight him on a snowy day. I mean, we we look at these things. So so I want to kind of go through this talking about the pit. It's not an ideal condition to fight a lion. I mean, I want you to think about this for a second because, see, see, here's, here's the part, problem of, of getting in a pit with a lion. There is a point of no return. I mean, when you jump in the pit, <laughs> 
man, it's on now. You got no way out. You got nowhere to go. I mean, if you're fighting a lion out on a plane or in a field or somewhere and the lion comes after you, you can run, you can dodge, you can do this, you can do that. You can get away maybe. Man, when you jump in the pit with the lion, you got no choice but to fight the lion. You are in there now. You are stuck in there. And, you, and there's nowhere to run. There's, no, there's nothing you can do. I mean, you are stuck in the pit. I mean, and I think about just the saying being in the pit, uh, you know, or being in the pits. So there's times where we feel like we're, 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 we're just down low, where we're depressed, where we're just not in a, in a mood, you know, to, to do this. And I mean, and I feel like sometimes God calls us to do something and we're like, Lord, I'm just not in the mood. I'm just, I'm just not in the mood. I'm not, I'm not up for this right now. I'm not up for this. But Benaiah, he was the kind of guy that he's like, okay, Lord, you send me a lion in a pit. I'm going in the pit. I'm getting the lion. I'm going to do this, you know. And I mean, I feel like that in the kingdom of God that we are supposed to be overcomers. We're not supposed to be whooped. We're not supposed to be just, just, just barely making it. But we're, we're supposed to be overcomers in Christ. He gave us the Holy Spirit of God to live in us. That, that, that we, could, we could be overcomers in this world. And not just barely make it. But we could have life. And life more abundant. And I, and I just I feel like that, that there's times where we're scared to death to get into a, a situation. Or, or, or fight a fight in a condition to where we don't feel like we could be at our best. Sometimes you're not at your best. Sometimes you got to take what God gives you and fight your way through it. There may be some of you that are there today that are saying, look, man, I, I, I'm, I'm in a pit right now. I'm in a place where I just, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. This is not an ideal condition. I don't know what to do. I'm here to tell you, hang in there and keep fighting. Hallelujah. Because I'm telling you, if God can get you in the pit, God can get you out of the pit. <laughs> if God can get you down in there, God can give you victory and you can get on out of there. To in a pit. The location where you find yourself right now. You know, maybe, maybe you're just in a spot where you just, you just don't know, how did I get here? How many of y'all have ever been in a situation where you're like, I don't even know how I got here. I'm in, I'm in a pit. <laughs> in the midst of a pit. With a lion. On a snowy day. How did I get myself into this? I'm here to tell you. I can tell you how you get yourself out of that. Trust God. Allow Him to fight the battle with you. And then you'll come out the other side. Let's talk about the second thing. So we got a location of a pit. We got an enemy that's a lion. I mean, I'm here to tell you, man versus lion. <laughs> I'm taking a lion every time. I'm sorry, but I'm taking a lion. I'm, matter of fact, I'm taking a lion even with someone with a spear. I'm taking a lion. The only way I'm not taking a lion is if you got a rifle or something. You're going to shoot that lion from way over yonder. I know that Benil did not have a rifle. He didn't have a gun. What he had at best was probably a spear. He jumped into a pit to fight a lion with a spear. Man, I'm telling you, every time. A lion is seven times stronger than a man. I mean, I want you to think about that for a second. Seven times stronger. So this is the kind of guy that he is, that Benaiah, this is the kind of guy that he is. He's willing to take on two guys of Moab and fight them. Definitely odds against them. He's definitely willing to fight a seven and a half foot Egyptian. Now he's going in to fight a creature that is seven times stronger than he is. He doesn't worry about that. He's not worried about odds. He's not worried about all those things. I'm telling you, he jumps in that pit. There's no turning back. He gets in there with the enemy, and he, and he, and he fights the enemy. Amen. He fights the lion. All that lion's got to do is swat him one time. He's done. The lion's powerful, mighty, awesome. But he's in a pit with an enemy that he can't. I mean, and I want to think about this for a second. Men generally do not defeat lions. You're in, a, you're in a situation you're probably not going to win. I mean, that's just not going to happen in a pit with a lion. All those things going back. You can't get back out of the pit. You can't get out of there. Now you've got to stand and you've got to fight. And see, and that's, that's the hard thing is that we so many times, once we get into a situation, then we're trying to figure out how do I get out? How do I get out? How do I get out? Rather than going forward in Christ knowing that if the Lord is with me, who can be against me, right? I mean, we, we, we look at that and so we, we see all that stuff. So we're in a location where we're stuck in a pit. A place where you don't want to fight a lion. The enemy is the lion. I mean, we're not talking about just any enemy. We're talking about a lion. But then talk about circumstances. A snowy day. I mean, I feel like that this was, was recorded because it was important. I feel like it was recorded to show us that sometimes situation, the circumstances are not um, as we would like to have them. 
I mean, we, we, we go through life and, and there's so many times where we, our circumstances are, 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 are not as we would hope they would be, that, that it's just not a good time. It's not, not a good thing. And I started thinking about that. Okay, he's in a pit. He, he, he's, he's with a lion. He, he's, he's on a snowy day. I mean, it's cold. You know, you're fighting in the cold. A lot of clothes on. You probably aren't as, as mobile as you could be. He, he's stepping in snow and, and especially wet snow. You don't have good footing. You, 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 you could slip. You could fall. And one slip, one fall, the lion has got you. That's it. I mean, you, you know, you're thinking about this. the circumstances that I'm in right now. Hey, it doesn't look like I can win. It's like any other time. I mean, you know, sometimes we're, we're just like, I can handle this any other time, but not right now. I, I can't take it right now. I mean, how many times have we said this? You know, look, if, if the circumstances were different, if something was different, why well, I, I would maybe I would try it. I mean, a lot of times God calls us to do things and we make every excuse we're like, well, I can't go there because, God, you're calling me into a pit. <laughs> and once I get in the pit, I can't get out. Now, now, because a lot of people, and that, isn't that one of the uh, complaints about uh, Christian work? You know, if you, if, you, if you become a Sunday school teacher, why, well, you're going to teach that Sunday school class till you die, right? I mean, if you run sound, Carrington, you and uh, Eric back there on media and sound, you're going to do it till you die. Forever and ever. That's your job. And Joey, if you're a youth pastor, you're, you're always going to be a youth pastor. I mean, that's, that's, that's it. You're, you're stuck with it. You have been called down in the pit. You're not coming out of there. You are stuck with this situation. I mean, I, I just I, I think about that. I'm in the pit. Now, now I'm fighting against something that I can't win. Y'all, have you ever faced something in life where you know you can't win? I mean, there's, there's times where you just feel like, I can't win. I can't win. I can't do this. I can't do that. We say, can't, 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 can't. But yet, God says, with God, all things are possible. All things. That means that even if you're in a pit, even if you're with a lion, you can still be victorious, even though it's not an ideal condition, even though the situation is not to your choosing. I mean, we all want to pick our battles. We all want to pick where we're going to go, what we're going to do. But I feel like that sometimes in our Christian walk, we decide that we're not going to fight at all. Like, I'm not going in the pit, Lord. No matter what. I'm not going to go in there. Why are you not going in there? Because there's a lion in there. The Lord says, well, but I can give you victory over the lion, but I'm still not going in there. And, then, you know, and he go on and on and on and on. And, and, and not only did he, was he in a pit, not only is he with the lion, but it's on a snowy day. Oh, man. We don't do anything on snow days, right? I mean, now, now people will not, they don't go to work, they don't, they don't do anything. But if you look on Facebook on snow days, Man, everybody's out in their coveralls, they got their four-wheelers, they're running up and down the roads, they're going, they're making snow cream, they're doing all kinds, there's all kinds of activity that goes on on a snow day, on a snowy day. Well, why not fight a lion <laughs> on a snowy day? Why not do something for the kingdom on a snowy day? We'll go out and play, but we won't go and fight. Now, I, I look at that and I say, you know, wow, man. So, circumstances, circumstances. Mighty men and mighty women are known for the battles they fought and they've won. But what makes someone famous is not the battle, but it's the circumstances. Where'd you defeat the lion? I defeated the lion in the pit. And not only did I defeat the lion in the pit, but it was on a snowy day. And everything, everything was against me. I'm here to tell you, when everything's against you, that's when God is the most powerful. Amen. When man can't do it, hallelujah, that's when God steps in with the miraculous. That's when God, when you can't do it, hallelujah, that's the best. I'm here to tell you, that's the best place you can be in a snowy pit with a lion on a day where you don't feel like you can win. That's when God can step in. Man, I don't believe that he, I don't even know if Benaiah knew that when he stepped in that pit if he could beat that lion or not, but he probably knew that if the Lord is calling me into this pit, hallelujah, I might not be able to defeat the lion, but my God is more powerful than this lion. My God is more powerful than the circumstances. My God is more powerful than a snowy day. Amen. We need to know that. We need to know that. Maybe you're faced with a battle that seems unwinnable. And see, and that's all the time in life. You know, you may be told this week, they can't do anything for your cancer. But you've gone to the doctor and, and they've said, look, we're sorry. This stuff's metastasized. It's all through your body. We can't do anything for you. 
Can I tell you who can do something for you? God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, by his stripes, we have been healed. Amen. We, we, we can walk in, in that victory. We can walk through that in the midst of that. You may be in a situation where you have lost your job. You don't know what you're going to do. You don't know how you're going to pay your bills. I'm here to tell you that's when God can step into your situation. But see, the thing is, is that we can't just lay down and die. We can't lay down and, and die in our situation. We've got to stand up in faith, allowing God to do what only God can do. And see, that, that's, where we, that's where we fall down. If you want to be a mighty man or a mighty woman of God, and you want to be known by the battles that you fought and won against all odds, then I'm here to tell you, don't be afraid to go in the pit with a lion on a snowy day. Because if that's where God is calling you, then that's where we need to go. That's where we need to fight the battle. That's where we need to do it. Because, see, we are so uh, conditioned that we, we want to make sure that everything is just so. We always try to have everything so. People told me, you know, well, before you have children, you got to make sure you get your money right, and you get your house right, and you get your finances right, and you get all this stuff right. Look, if I waited for all of those things before I ever had kids, I'd never had kids. I mean, I'd never had kids if I ever got. They tell you, well, you can't buy a house until you do this and this. And this when God opened the door for me to buy a house guess what I did I bought a house on faith I didn't know how I was going to do it what I was going to do but God was leading me we, we we try to line everything up we try to put it all in order in our minds but I'm here to tell you that God's ways are higher than our ways his thoughts are higher than our thoughts we can't even understand how God's going to work this thing out and there's days where he's calling you into a pit with a lion on a snowy day you're like Lord what are you doing I just believe he calls us into obedience. Obedience is better than sacrifice. There's times where God just wants us to, to go in because he's going to get all the glory. He's going to get all the victory. He's going to get all of that through the midst of, of what you're going through. With God, all things are possible. Our timing might not be right, but God's timing always is. And so as we as we go through this today, and I, I, just, I just like this, you know, I, I just like the idea of this. Every once in a while, I, I, I feel like I just need to sit down and, and read of Benaiah, that he had gone down and killed a lion in the midst of a pit on a snowy day. I mean, what are you facing today? That you're like, man, I, I can't do this. I, I, I don't know how, how this is going to work out. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I, I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you because today might be that day where you feel like that you've gone down in a pit. And not only are you down in the pit, but there's a lion in the pit waiting for you. And you're like, I can't defeat this lion. Not, not in my strength. Well, God's not asking you to defeat the lion in your strength. God's asking you to defeat the lion in his strength. That if we'll just stand back and allow, God's brought us down in the pit. We've got a lion before us. And not only do we have a lion before us, but it's a snowy day. It's not the day that I would, it's not a nice, warm, sunny day where it would be a perfect day for a battle with a lion. But it's a snowy day. It's, it's overcast. It's cold. It's slippery. All the things that could possibly go wrong. Think about all the things that could go wrong. I mean, that's, what, that's where our mind goes. We're like, I can't believe this. All this stuff could go wrong. But I'm here to tell you, I can tell you, all the things can also go right in Christ. Are you there today? Are you there today? Where you're, where you're like, man, I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm, I feel like... Benaiah, in the midst of a pit, with a lion on a snowy day. So I want to pray for you today. Amen. I can't be with you in person, but I can be with you in spirit. And so I want to pray, pray today for those of you listening this morning. You know, if you feel like you're in a pit with a lion on a snowy day, and I want you to cry out. Join your faith with me this morning, our faith in Christ, and uh, let's call out to God. Father God, we just come in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father, we just, we just, we ask you to come into our situation, our circumstances. Father, there, there, so many times we're, we're control freaks. We want to control the, 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 the location. We want to control the enemy. We want to control the circumstances. We want to control everything. We want everything to be in order in our minds before we ever take a step before we ever take a step. And, 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 and Father, I know that that's not really faith. What, what that is is faith in ourselves, but not faith in you. 
So, Father, I pray today that for those that are listening this morning, those that are watching this morning, Father, if they're, they're in a situation where they just feel like, I'm going to know when. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know how I'm going to get through this. Father, I pray that, that they would, 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 would take the, the lesson from the Word of God today, that, that no matter where you find yourself, you could find yourself in a pit with a lion on a snowy day and still come out victorious. So, Father, I pray for those today that are battling God, that, that maybe, they're, maybe they're battling a, 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 a situation that, that just seems like there's no winning at the end of it. Maybe, maybe they've, they've been given a diagnosis that it doesn't seem like they're going to be over, able to overcome. Maybe, maybe they've got family problems. Maybe their marriage is a wreck. Maybe their kids are running wild. Maybe everything in their life, maybe they've lost their job. Maybe, maybe everything that they look at around them appears to be lost. And yet, Father, I know that no matter where we find ourselves, Father, you are with us. You'll never leave us nor forsake us. You walk with us every step of the way. And, Father, I pray for those right now, Lord, that although they may feel like they are in the midst of a pit with a lion on a snowy day, that they will know that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. And it's your power, through the power of your Holy Spirit, that we're given the ability not only to overcome, but to live an abundant life in you. So, Father, I pray today, God, that we would just rest in you, that we would, we would place all our faith and all our trust in you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, blessings to you all on this snowy day. And hallelujah, if you are in the midst of a pit with a lion on this snowy day, then I pray that you be victorious and you come out the other side. Blessings to y'all. Till I see you again. Amen.